<clears throat> I can tell you about an interesting conversation that JT and I had right before the New York Magazine article came out accusing <coughs> um, uh, her and him of all these things, which I found absurd at the time, so absurd that I wrote angry letters uh, against Stephen Beachy to um, New York Magazine, for which I've now apologized even in print, uh, I got worried. And I called JT and I said, you know, they're planning this article on you. And I said, if it's not true, and I believe that it's not true, because it just couldn't be true, I said, you've got to do something about this. The only person who could prove that you exist and that you're a real person is your therapist. Now, I know that he has confidentiality restraints, but if you give him permission to just go public and say, JT exists, he's been in my office, he's a patient of mine, I can't tell you what we talk about, but there is a JT Leroy, this will help you to an enormous amount. You must call him and give him permission to do this. And JT, it was obviously her on the phone, went into a long philosophical, ironic, sarcastic monologue all about identity and how fluid identity was and how he owed nothing to the public to prove that he existed and how they should take the writing as it was and how he didn't care if they didn't think he had written a, a, it and how he stood behind his writing and that was all. So I decided to tell him a story uh, <clears throat> about something that had happened before he was born. Uh, in the early 60s, I think it was, there was a very popular pop painter named Keen, and he did these uh, drawings and paintings of children with enormous eyes with tears in them. And they were everywhere. They were on greeting cards, they were on postcards, they were on cocktail napkins, people collected the paintings, and he was a very, very popular painter. At a certain point, oh, he also had a wife who drew very similar pictures of adolescent women with the same big mournful eyes, but the, uh, um, but the drawings and paintings of the children were more popular. At a certain point, the Keens broke up, they got divorced, and the women went on talk shows and said that she had done all of these paintings and that he was masquerading as the artist and that she now wanted credit for them. And he denied the charges, so she said, if you want, we can set up easels in Union Square and you'll draw and I'll draw and we'll see who can draw these images, you and me. And apparently he never responded to that challenge. And a few years later, you never heard of Keen paintings anymore and you never saw them in gift shops, you never saw them around. So I told JT about this as a cautionary tale, trying to pressure him into getting his therapist to say that he existed. And he just said, as a matter of fact, I went to a gallery show of Keen paintings just the other day. And that became a constant joke between us, right between then and the time that he was ultimately uh, unveiled. And he would say, love those Keen paintings. He would sign an email to me or something like that. Meaning, you know, I don't care. And I have proof that people still do like Keen. And if that's my fate, it's fine.